We have now seen how to treat functions which are differentiable and uh, who have, which have a uh, Lipschitz continuous gradient. Um, unfortunately, uh, this approach does not directly transfer to non-differentiable functions. So for those, we have to uh, do it, or we have to have a different approach. And the approach is that we guarantee uh, this kind of stability, the little change in the, in the outcome when we have a little change in the argument, which is not the case for the subgradient, um, by solving a subproblem. Um, so we take a function, we create a problem, and we guarantee that whatever data we put out in the problem, um, when we change the data, then the outcome of this, this of the, the, the solution of the problem does not change that much, or at least we can control this change. So uh, this is very similar to like taking the gradient of this function with this Lipschitz gradient property. Um, whatever we, wh wherever we evaluate the gradient, um, we can control the, the error in, in the gradient by the error in the argument. Okay. So the most well-known concept of this subproblem approach is the so-called um, proximal point. Okay, and we will now define what this is. Um, definition. Let f be defined on H with values in on the ex, or in the extended real line, be proper, convex, and lower semi-continuous. Okay, let gamma be a positive number. Uh, gamma uh, will correspond to kind of step size as we had it in the subgradient method, but here the gamma uh, will not, uh, or the, the, the step will not be linear. So this gamma can have a kind of a non-linear influence on the outcome of this proximal point uh, problem. So this and let x be in h. The proximal point okay, is defined as, so for proximal point you can choose your favorite prepositions and include gamma and x and f uh, with this. I don't dare to do that. Is defined as uh, prox, the step size will be here, then we have the function, and then we take the point. And we take x as the data, and then our outcome will, um, so the, the result of this will de depend continuously on, on x, so that we can control uh, the change in the outcome by the change in the, in the argument here. Okay, and we define this as the minimizer, arg min, I write this, uh, over y in h of the function f of y plus 1 over 2 gamma, gamma being this one, uh, this guy here, norm of y minus x squared. Okay. So, this is our um, definition. So, um, whenever we now have a function f, uh, which is convex, proper, and lower semi-continuous. We can we have this quantity here. Uh, we will show some nice properties: existence, uniqueness, and some um, some uh, inequalities. Um, we can use this in our algorithm as an input, and um, very similar to the gradient. The disadvantage is that, in contrast to this to the subgradient this thing does not have simple calculus rules. So if you have a sum of, of two functions, and if you know 
the proxima point of both of the summons or proxima points of both of the summons, it's not in general not easy to calculate the proxima point of the sum. So uh, it's very important that you decompose your problem into components which are either smooth um, where you can or differentiable where you can evaluate the gradient and use that or have this proximal point and then use then use an algorithm which can put all these things together. Okay, um, let's now uh, come to the properties here. So let's formulate a theorem and we will prove a part of the theorem in this video and the other part in the next video. Um, okay, so the theorem has the same assumptions as the definition, so let F be proper, convex, and lower semi-continuous. Let gamma be greater than zero, and let x be an h. Okay, then there exists a unique proximal point prox gamma f of x. So we have already two statements here. Existence of a solution uh, to this, so existence of a minimizer of this function, and uniqueness of this minimizer. So we have to prove those two, okay? Uh, and the following statements are equivalent. So first statement, well, P equals prox gamma F of X. Second statement, um, X minus P over gamma is in the subdifferential of F at P. Third statement, for all um, Z in H, F of Z is greater or equal than F of P plus one over gamma X minus P Z minus P. Okay, so we see here that Whenever we evaluate a proximal point, then we get some subgradient at the resulting point, so at this proximal point. So we don't get the subgradient as in the subgradient method at the point um, like x, where we, where we would evaluate the, the proximal point. Instead, we get it at p. We get the subgradient at p. And we also have this nice inequality here. Um, which is very similar to the inequality uh, inequalities we saw in the last video. Um, so we, ha we have a relation between function values, basically. Okay, so we start the proof of this. In this video, we only get to the proof of the existence. So uh, we do uniqueness and the equivalent of, equivalence of these statements in the next video. All right. Um, so, first of all, um, we have to use that there exists uh, an affine minor end of f. So, let a be in h, alpha be in r, such that f of y greater or equal than uh, not f, but the affine minor end. So inner product of a with y 
plus alpha for all y in h. Okay, this is a uh, like in a fine minor, and we have established the existence. Then we want a point x prime in the domain of f. We know that f is proper, so the domain is not non-empty, and um, we have that f of x prime is a real number. This is also important. Okay, so now we have this here. So then, for all y in h, what do we have here? What is the consequence for this optimization problem? So we have f of y plus 1 over 2 gamma norm of y minus x squared is. So we have this relation for f of y. So we have greater or equal than a y plus alpha plus 1 over 2 gamma norm of y minus x squared. And this can be, uh, so uh, this is a quadratic expression in y here, and here we have a linear expression in y, and we can um, unite them to, one, to a single quadratic expression um, with y. So we have 1 over 2 gamma norm of y minus x plus, uh, let's see, gamma a should be right. So now if we, if we try to, to compare this, we have 1 over 2 gamma times norm of y minus x squared plus 2 times 1 over 2 gamma, so 1 over gamma times gamma, so nothing, times the inner product of a with y minus x. Here we have the inner product with a, minus a with y, so we just have to add the inner product with x. Okay, and we have gamma half norm of a squared. So this is a with plus here, so we have to subtract this to, to match the, uh, the expression here. Okay, so now we have all this, this, and we have the alpha. Okay, so this gives us a bound of this uh, function value here by this quadratic function here. So this is a quadratic function in y, the norm of y minus some point plus some constant which does not depend on y. So this will uh, so, so, so actually, we not only have a quadratic minorand for, 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 for this function, we have a, uh, so not, we, we don't have an affine minorand, we have a quadratic minorand. Okay, so now we want to see, well, um, that, we, that we get a, a minimizing sequence, at least. So we don't know the existence of a minimizer, but we know that uh, there exists a sequence such that this value here, uh, if you replace y by the elements of the sequence, converges to the infimum of this. Okay, so let y n, n greater or equal than zero, be a sequence in H such that, and now we want f of y n plus 1 over 2 gamma times norm of y n minus x squared converges to the infimum of this expression, y in H um, f of y plus 1 over 2 gamma norm of y minus x squared.
Okay, so um, we, we know that this infimum is uh, finite because the infimum is sm uh, smaller or equal to whenever we replace y with this point x prime in the domain of f. So when, whenever we, we replace this by uh, x prime here, then we just uh, we, we, we get something which is above uh, the infimum. Okay, so we have a, uh, a real number here. So this thing converges to something which is less or equal than this real number, and it's bigger or equal than this real number here, um, because this is greater or equal than this, and if you ignore this positive quadratic term, then it's also greater or equal, so you are between this and this. Okay, so the infimum is finite. So this is this shows that the infimum is bounded from um, from below, and this shows that the infimum is bounded from above. Okay. Right. So um, now we are interested in this in in the sequence y n, and we want to show that this is this is a bounded sequence. Um, why that? Because we want to choose a converted subsequence. Um, you might notice that this approach to the proof is very uh, similar to the projection theorem, so where we showed uniqueness, existence of a projection, and this is no coincidence, as you will see in your exercise. Okay, so what we want to consider here is this term here where we replace y with, uh, with the element in our sequence. So let's write this down. Um, so we are interested in, yeah, actually the, the upper limit, but, I, but this is, uh, I think we can, we can just write it without this upper limit for now. So um, we're interested in 1 over 2 gamma norm of yn minus x plus gamma a squared. Okay, we see here that uh, this is less or equal than here we have, well, f of yn plus 1 over 2 gamma norm of yn minus x squared. This is here. And we have to subtract all this here. So minus ax, luckily this does not depend on y, plus gamma half norm of a squared um, minus alpha. Okay, so this follows from this inequality below here. Okay, so now we know that uh, th this expression, this is the only sub-expression which contains yn, so uh, we know that this converges to um, the infimum f of y plus 1 over 2 gamma norm of y minus x squared. Um, and then we just add the, the, the remainder of these terms. Okay. And you see that this is just a real number. Everything here is just a real number. The infimum is certainly below plus infinity, and this is a norm, so that everything is certainly above uh, zero, of course. Okay, so we have shown that this norm here is a real, uh, is uh, 
convergent or the upper limit of this can only be a real number. So we, know, we, we conclude that the sequence yn is bounded. So let y and k be a convergent subsequence y and k should converge to y bar. And now what we've shown is that y bar is a minimizer of, of this function here. So that y bar is in the argmin, so that y bar is a proximal point. Okay. Okay, what do we have? f of y bar, this is what we are interested in, f of y bar plus 1 over 2 gamma norm of y bar minus x squared. We have uh, y bar as the limit of, of this sequence y and k. So by the lower semi-continuity of, um, of f, so f is lower semi-continuous, we know that this is less or equal than the lim in k to infinity of f of y and k. Okay? So y and k converges to y bar. So by this lower semi-continuity, we know that um, by the, for, for this convergence, the, the function can only like jump uh, downwards. So the function value at this limit point must be less or equal than uh, the lower limit of the sequence of function values, okay? And then we know that this function, the norm function, is continuous. So we have the limit of k to infinity of y and k minus x squared. This is continuous. y and k converges to y bar. So uh, the, the y and k minus x uh, norm squared converges to, uh, I forgot, 1 over 2 gamma here. Uh, it doesn't matter really, but still converges to this. Okay, now we are all, all, already almost at, uh, at our destination. So this is the lim in k still to infinity of the whole thing. f of y and k plus 1 over 2 gamma norm y and k minus x. Okay, because this is convergent and uh, this has the uh, lower limit which we just write here. And we know that this expression converges to uh, the infimum here. So, oh, we have, we have already some limit, so this uh, lower limit is precisely equal to, here we have a subsequence y and k of y n, but y n uh, converges to the infimum of f of y plus 1 over 2 gamma norm of y minus x squared. And this means that y bar um, is, or the, the function value of, of, this, of this function here at y bar is uh, less or equal than the minimal function value, so it's equal to the minimal function value, so y bar is a minimizer. In other words, y bar is a proximal point. And this shows the existence of a proximal point for all gamma, f, and x. And in the next video, we come to uniqueness and the equivalence of these three statements.